Well, here we are, dressed in our picnic clothes, right? <laughs> I don't know if you remember last year. You probably don't. I do. I said I was going to wear shorts this morning. Yeah. Well, I had them sitting there this morning, and I chickened out. <laughs> it would have been a good thing, though. <laughs> so I feel the spirit moving in me. I feel the vision moving in me. Are you ready for a new vision? Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready for one that you know, without a doubt, it's our calling? Won't that feel good when we all come together and we know, without a doubt, this is our calling? This is why Renaissance Unity is here. How many of you feel that in your life or in this church or in this country or are in the world that we are like at a crossroads. Yeah. Anybody? Everybody feel like that? I mean, we're at a crossroads. We're at a crossroads and we need a new vision. We need a new vision in all of this. In our lives, in our church, in our country, and in our world. And we need a vision we are all in on. The new era we are moving into is the era of being all in. It's an all in era. You know, many of you may be saying, you know, Reverend David, as you, you begin to talk more and more and more about this, you know, and, and I hear you talking about ambition, and, you know, I've just got to be honest. Right now, I'm at that stage in my life where really it's all about enjoying my life. It's about enjoying my kids, enjoying my grandkids. It's about doing some travel. It's about having lots of quiet time at home. This is what's really kind of appealing to me right now. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I got some amens on that, huh? Yeah. Well, fear not. Our new vision, your new vision, and the new vision of the coming age is not about ambition first. It's about mission first. Our era we are moving into is an era of mission over ambition. We've done the ambition thing. In fact, we've glorified it. Have we not? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Lots of good has come from that. And we're not going to part from that. But we are really called to glorify something else. We're called to be the ones shining the light and the love of God. That's what we're called to glorify. Through authentic lives, true to ourselves and true to one another. True to one another. This age we are moving into is all about mission over ambition. As many of you know, we've, we've been talking about uh, bringing here to Renaissance Unity a blessed soul on September 7th, September 8th, and, and September 9th. And we now have sign-up sheets out in the fellowship hall for this blessed soul. Her name is Deanne Hampton. And, and she really is uh, somebody who is all in on being the new human and making her whole life about it, you know. I've spent probably seven different conversations now. Don has been in conversation with her uh, probably at least that many times as well. And uh, what I'd like to do is just share a little bit about her, about her journey, about her life, about her mission in life, and why she's coming to Renaissance Unity. She's coming here for you. She's coming here for me, and she's coming here for all of Renaissance Unity as we move into developing our new vision. I asked her, as I shared once before, I asked her, why are you coming? Rather than asking her to come for a reason, and she spent time with that, and she says, I'm coming to shift the energy at Renaissance Unity into the new. Well, let me tell you a little bit about her story. Deanne, like so many in Unity on a journey to awakening to the truth of their being, to awakening to the truth of the nature of reality, to the truth of the nature of reality, was a black sheep in her family. There's a lot of that in unity, right? That it's part of the journey 
right, to, that, that takes us into moving deeper into discovering who we are. And so she was in a family that was very, very steeped into politics. In fact, her father was a political leader in Florida. And people would address Deanne as a, as a young child and even as a teen as her father's daughter. Her father's daughter. And that's what it always was. And, and she was realizing they're not seeing me. They're not seeing the unique me. You know, and, and something is happening in me. Something is really happening in me. And Deanne has shared and with myself and with Donna, and you can read it on her webpage online, that at a very young age, she was conscious and aware that there were a realm of angels that called themselves the Shining Ones that were present with her. And they were accompanying her. They were guiding her. And they were sharing wisdom with her about a future new humanity. A future new humanity. And so she shares early on in her life, she became all in on this. All in. Early in her life, she wrote a book. Well, later she wrote a book called The New Human, Understanding Our Humanity, Embracing Our Divinity. She wrote that in 2008 before Eckhart Tolle released his book, The New Earth. Right? I want to read a summary that just comes right off of Amazon on this book. The New Human is a timely work written with the implicit intent to provide a foundation of understanding about the humanity we are part of today, as well as a template, and pay attention to this part, as well as a template to radically change our way of being and interacting in the world. Everything going forward is about sacred relationship. It's about the way we interact with one another. It is about the, everything is about making the two one going forward. It's about making the two one to birth something new. We're learning that there is literally something energetic that happens that bursts anew when we make the two one and participate in that way. It goes on to say the new, it goes on to say that for a new world to be born on planet Earth, one of peace, harmony, inclusivity, and love, these virtues of the heart must be born within each individual. That's the mission, not the ambition. These virtues of the heart must be born within each individual. You can't bring a new day without a new consciousness, right? For the new human provides the instant comprehension of our individual responsibility to step out of the conditions of limitation and fear and into the freedom of becoming an empowered representative of a new world. I deeply want to be an empowered representative of the new world. How about you? Yeah. I deeply desire for Renaissance unity, for the unity movement, to be an empowered representative of a new world. Tone, if you can put that slide up of uh, Deanne's quote. I don't know how well you can see this. But this, this uh, week, maybe it was last week, somewhere in there, uh, Donna asked Deanne, hey, can you give us about 15 quotes that just come up for you? And, and, she, and De Donna wants to share them as part of her marketing plan. And uh, so I saw them, and there were 15 of them, and this one jumped right out at me. And I had to share it this morning. Let me read it. The new human is our Christ in nature, but it must be developed. The most important shift, are you with me? The most important shift in actualizing our Christ in nature is to make the new human journey more important than the human journey. They are one, but at some point, and it's different for each, perceptions and priorities shift around purpose, around mission, and the desire to know our true nature. Yeah. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. We've been remembering who we are. We've been remembering. Now we're going to awaken to something way beyond what we've been knowing. 
That's the mission over invention, to realize our Christed nature. We started a series, you know, oh, I think it's two to three months ago now, and, and we just started this whole thing about talking about this new human and this new earth, and, and we, we opened up with some statistics, and we said that, you know, on Sunday morning, there's about 16,000 churches that are meeting in Ohio. There are 380,000 churches meeting in the United States, and there are 37 million churches meeting on a Sunday morning throughout the world. And we asked the question, what will their message be? And we visited that our church-focused new message is going to be something for our day that 37 million are crystal clear on. And that's this. There is an age of a dawning new race. In 1949, Charles Fillmore, and I've read this many times because I'm just bringing it back that this comes from unity. Many are asking, is this from unity? This is from unity. Je uh, Charles Fillmore wrote, Jesus Christ is a type of a new race now forming on earth. And we visited uh, uh, last week that it's taken us 2,000 years to incubate this Christ consciousness that was penetrated into our psyche. And now here it comes. A new race is now forming on earth and is accelerating. Charles Fillmore goes on to say, those who incorporate into consciousness the Christ principles are its members. These are the called of scriptures. The ones awakening to their Christed nature, aware of the Christ principles, are its members. Are its members. You might be saying, Dave, you're just talking about unity. You know, you're just talking about unity. We're already the new church. We really are. We really, really are. But there's an observation I'd like to share with you about a shift that I think we need to make in unity. Okay, this comes from me. This is nobody else's research. It's just me. Okay? I've noticed that our unity movement is very much what you would call a fourth dimensional movement. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the days to come. And I got, we have so much planned for all of us to have this clarity on what is fourth dimensional consciousness, what is fifth. I know at this point, you know, that's just a little vague, right? It's vague. People are asking, what even is that, right? But by this, what I mean, it's very much been a movement about self-empowerment. It's a movement that's really been about remembering who we are, right? It's, it's a movement that's been about realizing that through our faith faculty, we are actually given the power to loose and bind on earth what's in heaven, what's in the, the, the mind of God, to, to make better lives for ourselves, to really learn that we're master manifest festers and we can create better lives for ourselves. Would you agree that's been our focus? And rightfully so, because that is part of the conscious evolution, that, that you must realize that before the, the awakening. So, you know, I've received, like I said, lots of feedback about, about this series, and some are saying, wow, I'm really enjoying this. This is spot on where we're going. It's spot on where humanity is going. But I've also had others say, what even is 4D? What even is 5D, right? <laughs> Several are chuckling. Some are saying, what really is this new human? I'm not sure I want to be one until I know what it is, right? <laughs> That's understandable. And, and so it's very, very clear that we have to keep, keep bringing understanding and understanding and understanding until we all move into a common understanding of just what this is. And as Deanne said, it's going to be unique for everyone. Others have said, I'm not even sure this is unity's teaching. I don't want to lose my unity and all its teachings. Unity's teachings are the new human teachings. We are just going to move further into, and this is big for Renaissance unity, we are going to move further into a consciousness of love. A consciousness of love is a fifth dimensional consciousness, and it comes through accruing more light as you practice fourth dimensional practices, as you practice forgiveness, as you practice non-attachment, as you practice non-resistance, as you practice non-judgment, you begin to accrue more inner light. And in unity, we call that wisdom, right? 
And Unity's teachings from day one has been that we're going to bring wisdom and love together to bring something amazing here to earth. That's our call. You know, it was about two months ago, if you can put that next slide up there, that Angela Barbati, she had a dear friend who transitioned and she was helping clean out her, her books and her paperwork and, and, and all these kind of things. And being a dear friend in Unity, she's like the rest of us. She had stacks and bookcases full of books, right? Anybody else have stacks and bookcases full of books? <laughs> I have 16 plastic cases down in the basement that from when we moved five years ago that I still have it unpacked. So we got we got, so I don't think I'm alone on that, right? Yeah, we, we, we cutched this thing back in our 20s and 30s or whenever it was we first caught it, and wow, it caught us, right? But as Angela was, was cleaning up, she came across the book and opened the page, and it came to this diagram here. This was taught by Ed Rabel, who was a famous, not, well, famous, but well-known uh, teacher in the unity movement in the 1960s and the 1970s, and he taught exactly what we're teaching. In fact, you can go online and you can, you can type in Ed Rabel and uh, Spiritual Awakening Basics, and it'll come to this series of five videos on exactly this process that we're talking about and what it is like to move into awakening to this fourth dimension, which is man remembering, remembering who we are. We affirm, we're a movement of affirmations, aren't we? It's all about remembering who we are. Thou art the Christ. But the next stage is this man awakening, and we are going to need the awakening, and we're going to need the capacity of the consciousness of love, because a part of awakening is that it doesn't just open you to this wonderful side, it opens you to seeing and being able to be there in a non-judgmental, compassionate way around things that are going to come as part of moving into this new, new era. So what we have lots of things planned to, to bring deeper understanding around this, I'm actually taking that Ed Rabel class and I'm boiling it down to a three-week uh, series that I'll be announcing soon. I've asked Marilyn Barrett, who spent a lot of her life in heart math, and she shared with me how the, that she studied about how we get stuck in 4D and what it's like to move into 5D. And, and I've asked Pam Ellison to assemble much on this, the new race and the unity movement and how it spoke about that early on, and she's going to be bringing a Wednesday night uh, service, so you want to be, be sure to be there. It'll be in probably October, late October, November, early November time frame. We'll announce that. And of course, we're bringing Deanne Hampton, Michelle Tisson from the New Humanity Foundation, all as a part of this journey to realizing our bold new vision. Our bold new vision. I'm just going to make our talk a little brief this morning so that we can move into our, our time of just being together and partying together uh, in our picnic. But if the musicians want to come forward, I would just like to close with four of these uh, quotes that Deanne has shared. Deanne Hampton, who's coming here on September 7th, 8th, and 9th. She'll be here on 7th on a Saturday from 9 to 1. It's going to be completely different in terms of workshops we've had before. And then our Sunday morning service, I'm just telling you right now, it's not going to be like this. <laughs> it's going to be a completely different kind of service. And then those who would like to meet with her one-on-one, -on -one, she's made that available as well. But as I began to read these quotes, I thought, wow, the more people see this, they're going to want to be here. They're just going to want to be here. So let me read the first one. The most important component of incruing light and embodying the energy of your soul is the willingness to let go. She has shared that with me over and over and over when she catches me. In my intellect, she said, David, you have to let go. You have to let go to allow for more of that energy to come to allow you to take you where it wants to take you. Number two, it is not possible to anchor the new idea into form without in first embodying a new energy. Let me read that again. It is not possible to anchor 
a new, new idea into form without first embodying a new energy. Number three, the new human is a consciousness pivot, a shift in perception and the vibrational capacity to live beyond fear, to live beyond death. Number four, and this is a this is powerful one. This one ought to catch your attention. I'm guessing it's going to catch your attention. Are you with me? Yeah. The new human is genetically endowed to co-create with other worlds, higher vibrating beings who know only love, a new earth existence that is already actualized. We're actually going to begin to work with other dimensions who've already realized a full community of a higher vibrational way of life. You know, I have actually witnessed this communication. And um, that's really one of the reasons I have such a passion about it. I know that it's so. And uh, so make sure if you can make this a priority on September 8th, September 9th, September 7th, please do that. I know you're going to be blessed. I just know you're going to be blessed. Namaste. Namaste.